Morning, everyone. Welcome to Smithfield Baptist Church. Um, I pray that you are having an absolutely blessed Thursday morning. Uh, I'm reaching out to you from the side patio of my house right now. It's just too beautiful to stay inside today. Take the nice days when you get it, right? Um, so I want to take a couple moments to touch base with you on Smithfield Baptist's church's plan going forward. I'm not sure if that's correct grammar, but I've tried my best there. Um, so I'm going to do it as our daily affirmation, and I pray that it encourages you. Um, I want to open with a big announcement. Um, the leadership team has gathered together. We've worked very hard for the last two weeks to put together a plan um, that complies both with the main CDC, but as well as allows us to worship um, corporately together in the church. And so we're now happy to unroll it, uh, unveil it. That's probably a better word, unveil it. We're happy to unveil our plan and let you know that June 7th, at 10 a.m., we will be gathering again in the church for our corporate worship service. June 7th at 10 a.m. will be our first service back since our hiatus due to the pandemic. So that is exciting news. Now, church is going to look different. There's no way that I can get around that at this point. Um, we want to make sure that everything we do is with the intention of keeping each other safe keeping each other feeling safe, um, and also making sure that we are good stewards and good neighbors to our communities. So uh, the leadership team put a policy together, put a game plan together for us for how we worship under the pandemic, uh, pandemic um, guidelines that we're dealing with right now. Uh, and all of our plans have been rooted in Jesus' two greatest commandments, which you can find in Matthew 22, 36 through 40, where Jesus says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Everything we're doing, we're doing so that we may worship God, so that we may glorify him. If you remember my daily affirmation from a couple days ago, this is something that half of Christians in our country are not being able to do during a time in which they need that really most. Um, but also that we can keep people comfortable and we can keep them safe so that they can feel like their worship experience is wholesome and they can focus on worshiping God rather whether or not they're going to get sick. So there are some rules we are going to have to stipulate. Um, some things we will follow in good faith. Other things, it made sense for our leadership to do. Um, the first being is that we're going to limit our gathering to 50 people. Um, so make sure um, that you get there early. We're going to try our best to accommodate. If we get over 50 people, we're going to try to accommodate to them per worship service. But um, right now, that's kind of where our hard cutoff is. That's where the state would like us to be. That's where we also feel comfortable. So 50 people is going to be our max right now. Um, you'll notice also when you walk into the church, things are going to look a little different. Pews are going to be blocked off. We've blocked off every other row of the pews in the church. There'll be painter's tapes separating them off so that we can achieve social distancing in a 360 um, circle around you. So please make sure that you're not taking down painter's tape to sit where you normally do. Just find the seat closest to you. Uh, we also ask that you try to social distance with your household. So if you have your immediate household with you, that you guys stay together and you put some distance between you and the next family um, so that we can stay socially distant in other areas. Um, that's how the church service will be laid out. Now, a requirement that we are going to strongly ask that you do is when you're moving about the church, when you come in and you get to your pew, when you get up from your pew to go to the bathroom or go somewhere else or to leave, when you travel throughout the church, please wear a mask. Um, leadership will be doing this. Um, as we interact with people, you will see me wearing a mask whenever I'm not on the pulpit. Some of it is obviously to protect you. Some of it is to protect other people around you. Some of it could be a placebo effect to bring other people comfort. If it makes someone comfortable and they're able to worship God appropriately, um, I don't see why there is a big problem for it. So the leadership gathered together. Now, if you're sitting in your pew during service um, and you choose not to wear your mask, but you are perfectly socially distant around other people, that is ultimately your decision. At the end of the day, 
we're not mask police. I'm just asking that you assist us with complying with the main CDC guidelines so that we can be good neighbors to our community, so that we can be good neighbors to each other who feel safer knowing that people around them are not only socially distancing but practicing with a mask. So those are the two major changes that you're going to see. A couple other changes that you'll notice is our offering will be different instead of taking it during the service. We're going to have an offering box in the back of the church and we're going to have an offering plate in the front of the church. Um, you may do your offering before service, you may do your offering after service when you're traveling throughout the building. Um, we're not going to specifically do a prayer offering, a taking offering at the beginning, though we will no doubt pray over the offering during our worship service. Just be mindful. Um, that instead of waiting for us to come through with collections, that it's actually going to be in two different locations, front of the church, back of the church for your convenience so that you can socially distance while doing your offering. Um, but it also keeps people safe. It minimizes the traffic we have throughout the church. Um, communion will look a little bit different. The Sunday will be a communion Sunday. Um, communion until the pandemic is over will be self-serve. We will be individually preparing communion up front and then we will have a process in place in which people come up, take their communion, back, go back to their seats, um, and then we will do our communion service. I will walk all of you through that Sunday morning when we gather for church. Um, just know that a few of our elements are gonna look a little different. And we didn't expect everything to stay the same as much as I want this to be done and over, and I pray every day that it is eradicated from our world. Um, our grocery stores look different. Our schools obviously look different. Our worship structure is going to look different. Um, it's not going to be able to impede how we worship God. I've gone back and forth with my heart a lot of times thinking about this because I struggle with us not being able to worship the same way, just as no doubt you guys do. Um, but at the end of the day, if the focus of us going to church is because we've done it the same way for the last hundred years at Smithfield Baptist Church, so we need to do it this way now. If we keep ourselves from going to church because of rules or policies that the church put in place to keep people in good faith safe, if we are frustrated with the experience of church because it's different than what we're used to. If all of that affects your heart deeply, um, definitely go to prayer because some elements of Phariseeism could be in there. If it's more important how we worship than who we worship, then we definitely need to align our hearts. I'm not calling anyone out who feels that way. I have struggled with this as well. This is a prayer that I use often over the last several weeks as I was um, delivering my messages to the wall in my office or I'm delivering them to an empty church. Um, I've had to pray this often saying, listen, worship is about worshiping God and how I can worship God um, is more important than how I worship God. So um, please keep that in the back of your hearts. Look at this as a fun challenge. Look at this as a once in a lifetime experience that we will be going through for the next several months, no doubt. Um, but ultimately, God is going to be glorified. That being said, um, if you are sick, you're feeling sick, you have a fever, or you've had a fever when the, within the previous 48 to 72 hours, please do not come to church. We will still have our messages online so that you can partake. Nobody will think less of you if you choose to stay home to protect yourself and protect other people. Um, if you really do still feel uncomfortable, like I said, our worship service is still going to be here. Um, it's important though, let us know, let me know if you're feeling uncomfortable to go to church because I will try to find other ways to allow you to be involved, to allow you to participate um, as best as we possibly can. I want you guys to stay engaged with the church. I want you guys to stay engaged with the community. I want you to enjoy worship services. I am excited to have it back, but I want you to do it from a position of earnestly feeling safe. Now it's important. Feeling uncomfortable, if you have a pre-existing condition, if you're older and you're in a demographic where you just don't feel comfortable because you feel like you could get corona and that it could be life-threatening for you, then absolutely, I don't hold it against you. Just know that if you choose to come to church, we're going to do everything possible to keep you safe and protected to the absolute best of our ability. 
Um, and everyone needs to have a helping hand and participate because I know several people who really, really are just going to be excited to be in the pews again, excited to see friends that they have talked to on the phone for several weeks but may have not seen face to face. So please be with us during our gathering. Um, pray for us and pray for our church and our community as we look to open and move forward so that we can be impactful. Um, just be mindful that our, our goal is to worship God, to love him with all of our heart, with our soul, with our mind, also to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. That means making sure that people who gather with us are safe, but also making sure that the community around us recognizes us as a sanctuary, as someone who cares about people, who's someone who's not doing this solely because they feel it's their constitutional right, but is actually earnestly trying to do the right thing by worshiping safely. So please be with us in this process. It's definitely a needle that we have to thread, but it's something that with God's help and God's guidance and God's will alone, we will be able to successfully do. So I pray that you have a blessed rest of Thursday. Look forward to my um, the Bible Project message coming out shortly and look forward to uh, the Holy Land video. Um, I will see you Sunday morning.